so you actually get paid for this Doug, or this is this is the day gig? Uh, well, this is yeah, this is where I work during the day. Um, right now, I'm working on some music that's for um, uh, a television show that we have in development. This children's television show that I'm working on, and uh, I'm just working on arrangements of, of tunes that will hopefully be used on the show. Uh, also in here, we we do a lot of programming for. Uh, the TV shows that we work on, Goosebumps. Um, done a lot of work in here for the Discovery Channel, um, some of the shows that are on there. Uh, a lot of song demos, just things like that. Uh, it's quite a, it's quite a um, an elaborate setup. With this setup, we can do all kinds of things. As you see, I press a button. And we have a full, uh, full arrangement of a tune. Is this where the CD was recorded? Uh, no, but it was. It was not unlike this. Uh, this setup. Um, I worked in a room much like this. We had a. S uh, we had actually pretty much the same gear. Uh, the CD, however, was mostly done with uh, guitar acoustic instruments, and uh, we recorded onto a, a small digital tape. Yeah, I, I, I've had a good listen to it. How many tracks were you using? It, it, it seems pretty sparse to me. I was quite impressed with that. Like, uh, I, I, I would assume about eight tracks. Well, it was recorded on eight track, but in fact, some of the times we didn't even use eight tracks. You know, if there was a guitar and a voice on a song and that was it, we might use four. You know, each the the voice and the guitar being recorded in stereo. But um, no, we, we hardly used anything. Um, there were we um, we recorded um, on some of the songs. I found there's a tune called Lizzie Lindsay, and we recorded, I think, th two other musicians as well as myself. And I was playing guitar, mandolin, and singing. And then there was uh, fiddle and penny whistle. So we were starting to use up all eight tracks. But no, it was essentially done. Was it was a lot of it, was a lot of it done live as you know like I was like you were just playing your guitar did you, uh, guitar and vocals or did you do no, your I guitar? Had to, I had to track it. I had to do the guitars all first, then do all the singing. Um, mostly because we were just in a room like this. We had one microphone. Uh, we couldn't really um, do guitar and vocals at the same time. Um, generally, it's a problem even in in larger studios. Although they they uh, in a larger studio they would have the wherewithal to separate the guitar and the voice a little bit better. They would have a mic on each, uh, but we had one mic, so <laughs> we had to make do. Uh, you know, one of the, one of the, one of the pro promo uh, prom promotional things you gave me, it said Summer Tour, uh, Stay With Me, was that an album? Uh, that was an album that came out after Mona with the Children, and um, I didn't get a commercial release of it. Um, I couldn't get a record deal, I couldn't get a distributor, all that kind of thing. Uh, I did a tour that summer, uh, opening up for Seals and Crofts, who were doing a tour across Canada, um, and I was able to sell albums that way. Um, but it, and I did get some airplay. Uh, one of the songs on there called "Lose Your Lovin'," I got a significant amount of airplay on. But again, I didn't have a record deal, so it didn't really. Tangleheart, which which number is that for your albums? Is this like your third album? I'm, I'm, or it, have you been? How many albums have you done to date? Or how many in the can? Well, uh, that have been released commercially, or um, even that are or have you you've produced? Well, I've done about five or six. Yeah. Um, Mona with the Children is the one that seemed the uh, the most uh, attention and and certainly the public's notice. I did a number. I did about three albums that were released in the Baha'i community worldwide a number of years ago. Um, that had to do with youth and children. Uh, I did a children's album called Rainbows, which has also gotten uh, a limited commercial release. And uh, that was just pre prior, prior to Tangle Heart. So I've worked on probably 
four or five. Yeah. Um, uh, Tangleheart, I, I almost thought it was a spiritual album listening to it. It, it could pass for a Christian album, that, from my listening to it anyways. That was my, my interpretation. Well, there's one song on it that's an old gospel song. It's actually not even a Celtic song. Uh, I did it in a kind of the Celtic style. But I had no intention of that. I think what it is about that music is that it is inherently spiritual. And it would tend, I think, to appeal to that in people. Is that Mary with Three Links that you're talking about? Mary, yeah, Mary wore Three Links. Yeah, because I, when I when I listened, to, like I was listening to you we at the chapters, and you had you had the slide guitar, and it sounded it sounds so much different from. I had to have a second t listen to it. it well, it's a, it's a, as I say, it's an old it's an old uh, gospel song from the, from the southern states. And when I started to play it, I realized that that there are great similarities between. Um, Celtic music, or you know, so-called Celtic music, and North American folk music, because in fact, North American folk music was a blending together of uh, English, Irish, Scottish folk songs, and um, the black blues music that was going on at the time. So, um, really, I think you can go into just about almost any kind of music and find those um, find those parallels. I'm also a, a student of the blues, and I like the blues, and uh, it um, it seemed to go together to me. So, but I didn't have any uh, sort of overtly religious ideas in mind with Tango Hard. I, it, to me, it was a, an expression of the music. If the music expresses that well, then I think that's the uh, the richness of the of the genre and the richness of the actual songs. Where did you? Uh, it, it seemed like I, I, I know you're a happy guy because you're you happily married and that. But uh, <laughs> you seem to muster up quite a lot of pain. When I was like, I thought, man, this my first listen to the record. I thought, man, this guy's <laughs> had a lot of deep wounds, but uh, where did that all come from? Well, you know, I think again, it's the music. Um, mm -hmm. The years that I've been involved in pop music, you know, whenever you write a sad song, um, no one wants to hear it. No one in the business wants to hear it. They think, oh no, don't you have something up tempo, you know? Don't you have something kind of, you know, more positive? If you listen to music, if you listen to the radio, there are a lot of sad songs on the radio. There are a lot of songs about people's you know, lives falling apart, their relationships breaking up. If you go back to Celtic music, there there are really a lot of sad songs. They talk about people dying, they talk about great tragedies. Um, that's just simply a part of life. And if you if you ignore that part of your life, then what do you have to compare with to make your life happier? Um, what I found with that kind of music, with Celtic music, is that I might not necessarily be a sad person, or sad all the time, or depressed, but uh, when I sing those songs, it touches that um, that place in myself or in other people, and I think it's a it's a place that people recognize. I think it's also very necessary, um, you know, music for the Celts, um, and then and then down since then, and in many cultures, was for the longest time the way in which all the cultural information was was transmitted from from generation to generation. Um, people learned about who they were from their music. People uh, learned the stories of their uh, of their families, of their ancestors, and often there was great tragedy involved, and it was a way for them to release those feelings. Uh, I know many times I've played at weddings, uh, and I've played a song which to me might not necessarily w make people cry, but everyone's cried. And they come up afterwards and say, oh, you made us cry, and I think, well, I didn't really make you cry. You were ready to cry, and all this song did was, you know, bring that out because it spoke of some deep beauty or some deep truth. Um, I think that also goes back to the role that in uh, in the Celtic world and then thereafter, uh, the singer, the poet, the bard would have. It was their job to um, to reflect back to the people who they were, to in fact tell them who they were, to to give them um, knowledge of of where they had come from. And to touch them in that way, and so that they would remember those things. We we seem to have a often in our culture we, we don't want to talk about things being sad or tragic, but we're only too happy to listen to a sad song that will help us you know bring that out. And likewise, we're we're happy to listen to a happy song because that you know reinforces that feeling as well. But you have to have both. And I think Celtic music, especially Irish music, is is fantastic at getting at the tragic. What's the next step for you after Tangleheart? If you if you're if another album does come up come, or the creative juices keep on flowing, <laughs> where, where, which way are you going? Well, I'm I, right at the moment. I'm working in two streams. One is the Celtic stream, and I and I, I plan to make another album like Tangleheart uh, within the next year. 
um, and I'm working pretty hard on getting Tango Heart distributed and marketed and all of that kind of thing. Um, the other thing is I'm working in children's music. I'm working developing a television program um, um, and writing a lot of tunes like the one that I was working on here. Uh, those seem to be the two streams that I'm going in and uh, I don't think that one, um, I don't think there's a conflict between one and the other. I think that they'll complement each other. And what's happened to me is that I've found a musical home in these places. I, I feel comfortable. Um, the kind of music that I feel closest to and enjoy, I can play in these streams. Um, if I think if I was trying to be a pop star, I think it would fit because I don't feel as uh, as attached to, to, to pop music, although I like pop music. But these are the kinds of music that I grew up with, and these are the streams that I'm going in. So with Celtic music, that's the alternative to alternative? Um, well, e as I get older, um, I think I'm less involved in what music is and what it's called. And, and pop music to me is sort of one big, huge thing. And alternative music seems to be part of that one big, huge thing. Um, Celtic, so-called Celtic music, I, I think is just simply a, a style. It's a genre. It's a, uh, it comes out of the past. It, it's a tradition. And if I continue to um, learn songs and write songs in that tradition and growing out of that tradition, then that satisfies me as a musician. Um, the music business is a whole other thing, and pop music to me is so much wound up in the music business that um, by, I mean, you know, my, my intention is that, that when I record CDs that people get a chance to hear them and buy them, so it's not that I'm opposed to it, but at the same time, I, I found in the past when I was involved in the pop world, there would be an expectation for me to do something which was, eventually I saw was outside of myself. This was not music that I could relate to. Uh, this, was, this wasn't music that came from my soul. And uh, returning to Celtic music, and uh, with the kids' music, I'm returning to, um, um, you know, um, sort of country blues roots, folk music roots. Those are the those are the roots that I that I started out in with music, and that's where I feel. I worked um, prior to this. I worked uh, for uh, is that right? Eh? Worked as a factory <laughs> in Scarborough for uh, about three weeks. And that was it. Eh? Yeah. Well, I got laid off. Happiest day of my life. <laughs> no, I, you're talking about making a living, making music, and um, I feel very fortunate that I that I get to do this, and I haven't been doing it all that long and making you know a living. And uh, for me, it's it's a great uh, it's a privilege, and I'm quite happy. And I I know that you know if I had to, I would do something else. But I've always done music, even as I worked at other things. So, if you're anywhere between the ages of nine and twelve, you probably are reading Goosebumps books. And now, I've seen the watch. Uh, and um, for instance, when our son was nine, he only read Goosebumps books, and he read them by the, the dozens, and he collected them and he traded them, and uh, and it's now this big TV series. It's actually very very successful, Canada and the states. Is it American? But or it's sort of scary. Oh, well, it's it? produced here in Canada. That's alright. It's, eh? it's also shown in the states, and it's a scary show. I mean, it always has some weird twist to it, and that's just like movies. Very very. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me, Doug. Just just get, try to get a different name. Sorry, do you have to, I'll let you get in there. Do you got to turn close? This is another kid's tune. So what time the chapters get, get go to? It's supposed to go to seven, but to me that's way too long.
infinite amount of virtual tracks, I think? No. Well, with the machines that we have, each of these machines has 16 sounds that you can run at once. Um, plus we have uh, four audio tracks where we can actually record guitar or voice or something like that. Uh, so, you know, you have this uh, unbelievable range of sounds and things that you can do. And the program itself allows you to do things like, I like that part, I can copy it down here. There it is. I don't like it, I can get rid of it. Um, and I was just going to record something on the roads. Up. So. This was your first uh, instrument? Who's that man with that thing on his head? Do you get an electric guitar at all there? Yes, I do. I can. Uh, Any pedals? Can I can play an example. Let's uh, close this. Something that we did recently for. Synthesized? No, the guitars were real. The rest of it is. Um, the rest of it is. Um, um, Do you find with MIDI music though sometimes it's a little, it sounds a little bit stiff. That's uh, that, that's why my, myself I pr actually prefer, um, you know, like any, any if it's played live, it's you just can't beat it. I th I think they still haven't yet yeah, close. Yeah, agreeable. But um, you know, for for the purposes of writing music for television and and film. Um, being able to do stuff on MIDI has completely changed the way you do it, you know. I, we can do something here in a day um, that would have taken weeks before, you know, like a full orchestra or, a, you know, a live band. And, yeah, I think when it really counts you might want to go and do the real live stuff. But most music that you hear on TV, you don't hear a lot of it anyway. And I think most people's ears now are so attuned to hearing programmed music that it's it's something which I think sometimes they'd be very hard pressed to know that they're actually hearing it. Um, now, when I listen to commercials on TV and stuff like that, I hear sounds that I know come from some of these machines. So I, you know, I know that okay, that's programmed. But other people listening can't really tell. Um, it doesn't bother me. Um, I know what you're talking about. And and for instance, Tango Heart doesn't have. Uh, it has a, f a few synthesized sounds. Is that right? Which tracks? Which just out of curiosity. Well, the bass sound is a oh, okay. is a keyboard bass sound. Um, I guess that's about it, really. Uh, for that music, I wanted it to sound like these were real musicians playing it because that's really, you know, that suits it. Um, but for instance, let's hear what this is. <laughs> Love. 
live guitar and, and um, sequenced tracks. that was recorded in it, right here, to hard drive. Was that direct? Are you going through a pedal for that? I was, yeah, using, I was using some pedals. Digital, you can you can cut it out. <laughs> um, yeah, I I might have been sort of um, worried about this, you know, five ten years ago, but now it's so convenient um, and to be able to record live guitar playing with voice right onto hard drive is you know it's great. It's the thing. Well. Yeah. 